Welcome to ITVideoCoach.com. This is Exchange Server 2007. This is a part one of eight series covering LCR replication using mount points. In this part one, we're going to look at the details on how to prepare your disk drives for LCR replication. You can find all my videos and higher quality downloads at www.ITVideoCoach.com. Also be sure to look for all my videos up on YouTube at YouTube tag Grizzamore, G-R-I-Z-Z-A-M-O-R-E. Thanks a lot and here's your presentation. Hey everybody, welcome back to ITVideoCoach.com. This is going to be a part one, and are you ready for this? An eight part series. That's right. I'm going to try to cut it up, make them as small as possible so you can watch just the pieces you want to look at. If you want to see the whole thing in a contiguous format, you can go to www.ITVideoCoach.com. So this is part one of an eight-part series for Exchange Server 2007 on how to configure local continuous replication. Now there are actually many different ways to set it up and I'm only going to demonstrate one way which is the Microsoft recommended best practice which is using mount points. So I'm going to demonstrate how to use mount points, how to set up the disk drives, make them available, and how to configure everything. We're going to prove it, we're going to break it, show you that it's not working. We'll test it, verify it's not working, we'll fix it, verify it's working using LCR, and then we're going to reestablish everything when we're done. So it's a, from the very beginning to the very end, recovery, and then making sure we're back up and running again type presentation. So this first part, part one of eight, is on preparing disk drives. So what we want to focus on here is how to get our disk drives configured to support LCR in the first place. Now, in the Windows Server 2003 operating system, it's pretty easy to get Exchange to C2 disk, to, to C2 disk drive. So the actual demonstration itself is pretty easy. Let's just take a look at what we have here for uh, disk drive. So I'm going to right-click on my computer and go to Manage. Now, keep in mind that I'm working on a virtual machine, and I've added two SCSI drives to support my storage group that I'm going to create, and then the LCR copy. So if I go into Disk Management, it's going to open up the wizard. We're going to click Next, and we will initialize the drives. That puts a signature on the drive so that we know, so that, we know that they come from this server, which helps us if the drives ever get moved into a different server. So that's very helpful. So we want to make sure that we put signatures on the drives. Okay. Now we're going to convert the disk to dynamic. Now this is really not necessary in this example, but for the most part, we want to use dynamic drives to take advantage of all the cool features that we get with dynamic disk drives, but we really, really don't have to have it, but we're going to go ahead and use it here in this example anyway. Okay, for, for the most part though, just keep in mind, dynamic is usually the way to go. If you want to know more about dynamic drives, I have other videos that will demonstrate how to set up dynamic disks. Okay, so here's the very important point. You have these two drives in your system. Now we look at this as disk one and as disk two. We have uh, volumes that have not been created yet, so they're considered unallocated space. Now if I'm sitting on a server that's installed on a high-end HP server or on a Dell server, a rack-mounted, you know, the type of server we're going to use to put Exchange on, I'm probably going to have either a high-end disk backplane with a RAID 5 array or a hot swappable array or maybe I'm even porting out to a SAN. The hardware on a high-end server that's, get, that's going to be su supporting your Exchange server is going to hide that complexity from the operating system. So when I look at this one disk that might actually be a LUN on your SAN that's a RAID 5 configuration but the OS just sees it as one drive. The same with disk 2. Hopefully that's out on your SAN, and that is a LUN that the OS sees as a single disk. So behind that disk is a RAID 5 configuration, and behind this disk is a RAID 5 configuration, or, or something of that sort. So I just want you to keep in mind that behind the scenes, hopefully you have something that gives you the fault tolerance you need to support this. Okay. Now also, on top of all that, Microsoft recommends that you put your uh, log files from your storage group on a mirror, and then your database on a RAID 5. Look, if you did it the Microsoft way, you would need like 100 disk drives to support just two storage groups. 
I mean, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but it seems kind of ridiculous, some of the requirements they want you to have. I do understand the concept, though, of having the logs on the mirror and then the database on the RAID 5. But if, but if you're configuring LCR, you could probably get away with, you know, one RAID 5 with your log files, your system files and your database on one, and then just two would be the LCR copy of that. I don't really have to have the log files separated. I mean, for, for, for performance reasons, if you're being really, really picky about your performance, you might want to have separate log files on a, on a mirror so that when the mail comes in and it's written to the log file, then into memory, then to the database, it's not hitting the database directly, giving you better performance. Without a doubt, I, I totally get it, and I understand and appreciate that. And you might want to do that. I'm not saying don't do it, but it's not a necessity. Um, you know, if you're working with a single server, uh, it might be more likely that you would do something like that than if you have a SAN that you can point to where you have all those disk drives available. All right, so anyway, let's just go ahead and create our drives. I think you get the idea of, of the point that I'm trying to make there. So I'm going to create a brand new volume. And this is a simple volume. We don't need any of these other options here because, again, I'm trying to mimic uh, the OS scene, the RAID 5, behind the simple volume. We'll use all the disk space we have. And we're just going to not assign a drive letter or path, okay? We'll come back in the next video and create the map points. We're just going to label the volume storage group 3. Now, I don't want you to be confused. This is not the storage group. I'm just labeling the volume so that I know that the storage group I'm going to create in Exchange is going to point to this volume, okay? And we'll create uh, the volume and do a quick format. So this is a volume. This is not a storage group. That's just a label, okay? I don't want anybody to get confused about what I'm saying there. So that is just a label. I am not creating the storage group, okay? And that'll go create that. And then while that's formatting, we can go ahead and create the target. And this is going to be a simple volume. Now, now that I'm down to just one disk drive, I don't see these other options. They're not lit up. So this will also be 8 gig, and again, we're not going to assign a drive letter or path. In the next video, in part two, we'll show you how to create the mount points for your LCR. Okay, and this will be the LCR copy of storage group three. Okay, and we'll create a uh, perform a quick format on that. All right. So what we have are two brand new volumes. This volume on disk one. This, this label for the volume is storage group three, and the label for this one is storage group LCR copy of storage group three. So once again, we're just creating the disk drives so we can have a nice, good demonstration of how to set up LCR. So it's actually not that complicated or anything. It's just something I wanted to put in a separate video to make sure that those points were clearly made. Okay, so come back for part two. In part two, I'm going to demonstrate how to create mount points out of those volumes.